seeing, what we are seeing is that we are in a transition. We had this strong economic growth because of the, of the work that this president has done in the past 18 months. And now what we're seeing is a transition into stable and steady growth. Yeah, yeah, that's an accurate depiction of what's happening right now and not an exaggeration of the financial picture that we're looking at right now, which is only going to get a lot worse. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Luke Radowski here of WeAreChange.org, and there is a lot of absolutely crazy news to get into as, of course, the Davos World Economic Forum is on the move, implementing a lot of shadowy policies that, of course, will make you miserable and might even end you up in jail. This as also today we're finding out that some of the most notorious, most disgusting, most evil people in this world actually get promotions at Harvard. All of this as tensions between China and the United States escalate drastically with some absolutely bewildering developments, which we're also going to be talking about in this video. But before we do, I think it's fair to say that, that if you're happy about the, the larger amount of economic prosperity that's been taken away from you, that you're concerned about you and your children's financial stability and future, you shouldn't worry about it. You shouldn't be dooming and glooming because you're a part of an amazing transition envisioned to you by some unaccountable corporate banking billionaires of how you should be living your life. This vision, of course, is encompassed by the UN 2030 vision, or how others have called it the Great Reset, which the Prime Minister of the Netherlands compliantly regurgitated his carefully crafted talking points around this matter. This as the government there is running a full-on offensive against the farmers there in an effort to try to take away their land and ability to provide food, not only for the people of the Netherlands, but for the people of the world. This as the farmer protests there have been getting very very insignificant coverage in the U.S. mainstream corporate media. All of this as politicians like the prime minister there are implementing laws and more importantly decrees that will up and normal life so the super rich could only become more rich this as the organization openly boasts about how the next technological revolution will create a useless population that they will have to pacify with video games and with drugs this from the same organization that of course has been pushing mrna technology while of course you know casually talking about the merger of man and machine by the year 2030 as they themselves literally talk about how they're going to have God-like power and authority over everyone else. And that's not an exaggeration. Those are comments made by Yaral Harari, one of the individuals at the helm of this organization, the right-hand man to Klaus Schwab. And some people like to live in la-la land and in denial that this could never happen when... The World Economic Forum is, is literally talking about robotic human hybrids in just a few years from now. I, I, I was talking about 6G earlier, which is around 20, 2030. I would say that by then, definitely the smartphone as we know it today will not anymore be, be the usual kind of the most common interface. Wow. This, this, many of these things will be built directly into our, our, our bodies. Now, who's going to be developing this technology? Who's going to control it? Who's going to be running the algorithms and the programs are going to be inside of you? Well, that's a question that I think a lot of people should be asking themselves. As, of course, the World Economic Forum plans on not only implementing technology into human bodies, but implementing things like smart cities that, of course, largely will be integrated into the larger social credit score where they track, trace, and database. And also, on top of that, control your every movement with, of course, a future dependent on public transportation which is unreliable which wastes a lot of resources and a part of that plan even admittedly according to the United Nations and the World Economic Forum is to get rid of private vehicle ownership and we have seen major cities that have pushed this great reset policy implement a lot of rules and laws and regulations that make it almost virtually impossible to have a private vehicle in major urban areas like New York City a place that just announced that they are turning on their speed cameras almost everywhere you drive, which will operate 24 seven. 2000 speed cameras have been officially activated. And from talking to some of my friends and loved ones in New York City, they were already a headache before being officially turned on. And the smallest infraction will of course have a bill sent to your home address demanding you pay the city or else face the full might of the police state which will throw you in a cage unless you give your pound of flesh to the king and who are these policies most going to of course affect 
Not the rich people, not the people who have a lot of money, not the people who already depend on cheap slave immigration labor in New York City, but of course, the poorest people amongst them that won't be able to pay these fines. This as there's even some mainline studies out there highlighting how these speed cameras could actually cause more car accidents. Why are they doing this? Well, this is the smart cities. This is the smart grids. This is the future that they want for you as of course only the super rich will be able to drive, speed, and do whatever they want and you the peasant will be seen as the lower class. This is why again a lot of people are leaving a lot of major urban areas. They have been filled with, with violence. They have been filled with politicians micromanaging every aspect of people's lives. And essentially, big cities are turning more and more into the playgrounds of the unaccountable billionaire class. As of course, you speed, you provide a microaggression, you post something online that the g government doesn't like, you jaywalk, you eat too much red meat in a certain amount of time, you use plastic straws and plastic bags. Oh, the police state's going to be on you like white on rice, but if you're an individual like Jeffrey Epstein that for over 30 years hurt thousands, and I mean thousands of small children in unspeakable, horrible ways that we can't mention here, you of course will be promoted. You'll be shouted out on VH1 as the rich, successful businessman that's an awesome human being, and you'll also get a private residency at Harvard, just like we found out and were reminded of this by Joe Rogan, who actually talked about this on his recent podcast and I commend him for, uh, for doing so as of course this is an older story that is worth resurfacing as even Politico did a piece on this highlighting how Jeffrey Epstein for some reason had his own private office at a university with a bunch of small children running around now why did Harvard allow their children, their students, to literally be subjected to a monster that hurts children? Well, that's a question that I think a lot of people should be asking themselves. Joe Rogan is asking it now because as Joe Rogan points out, Harvard knew that, that Epstein was a predator. They knew he was convicted. They knew he was arrested, but they still allowed their facilities, their staff, their professors to work one-on-one -on -one with him with his projects because he was bribing them with donations now very interestingly where was jeffrey epstein's office well according to the records it was a part of the program's evolutionary dynamics program at the university as of course we know that some of the studies that epstein was working on along with other luminaries in the scientific field individuals like bill gates but specifically Jeffrey Epstein was a eugenicist that believed in population control and literally tried to see the world with his DNA. So him specifically having an office at the Evolutionary Dynamics program at, at Harvard University raises some questions about what actually he was doing there. Was he working on, on eugenics, population control, or was he using the office to be a predator against the children living there? And in my humble opinion, I, I think both are true, as of course there's circumstantial evidence suggesting this, and in my opinion, Harvard still has a lot of very important questions to answer as one of the top prestigious universities in the United States that of course aided and abetted some of the worst activities on the face of this earth. Again, shouts out to, to Joe Rogan for highlighting this story once again. As of course, Jeffrey Epstein probably was working for some kind of government that was running an international extortion operation that did extremely nasty bad things to small children the scientific community again has been filled with a lot of fraudsters a lot of fakes just like we're finding out from the recent bombshell information that the country's major alzheimer's study was manipulated for the pure benefit of big pharma highlighting how scientists lied manipulated data and with just how evil the scientific community could be at times it makes you wonder what kind of scientific experiments harvard Epstein and Gates were really up to behind the scenes that we still do not know about. As today, we're also finding out that the people who worked most closely to Master Epstein are also trying to pocket $13 million from his estate for their own personal benefit. There also has been a lot of mysterious money transactions that can't be explained by major financial institutions after the alleged demise of Mr. Epstein that, of course, still cannot be explained. There's been a lot of mysterious money moving around, and, of course, 
course, he's not the only person implicated here, as of course it's also Prince Andrew that today we're finding out was allegedly laughing his head off while denying that he hurt a child. Yes, just when, when you couldn't think of, of more insanity, more craziness. We're getting information that the BBC is covering up even more details about the car crash interview that they did with him and edited it out a scene where he was laughing his head off when directly asked about the very serious allegations against him. And that is definitely not an appropriate way for any innocent human being to respond to the very serious allegations made against them. This as we're also finding out today that allegedly the same person that introduced Meghan Merkel to Prince Andrew also was the same person that introduced Epstein to the royal family, which of course they were very intricately connected to. And we still have to remember that Prince Andrew was probably just one patron of Mr. Epstein Epstein and his extortion operation. This says we're finding out today that the Gateway Pundit is actually filing a lawsuit to help identify the client list of this monster and the very powerful people that he, of course, serviced in the most jaw-dropping way. Again, Epstein, the client list, the billionaires, the bankers, the politicians, the media moguls, the celebrities that, that, that were all of his customers are still running free, probably hurting more children now, but in the United Kingdom, rest assured, if you post something that gives someone allegedly anxiety, the police will literally show up at your door, drag you out of your house, and put you in handcuffs. That's the society that we're living in, and that is an absolute absurd society that I refuse to live in. And hey, this is why I created my own platform, LukeUncensored.com, which you could sign up right now and be a part of our own quasi secretive private organization where we strive to provide you the most amount of value that we can for being a member of this specific platform we provide you a lot of value here lots of videos videos from from almost eight years ago and in today's video i will be specifically giving you a review of alex's war a new documentary that is out i watched it i have a lot of things to say especially because of my personal experiences with alex what did i think of the documentary should you watch it what should you expect well we're going to be talking about that plus a lot of my own personal experiences later on today on LukeUncensored.com if you want that video, if you want the three masterclasses, if you want the form, if you want to be a part of our AMA, if you want to ask me anything that I have to answer, sign up right now on LukeUncensored.com for just 50 cents a day and be a part of our official members area where you could find like-minded individuals and also get cheap discounted shirts that of course no one else can get. LukeUncensored.com, that's the website. Click on it right now. Now, geopolitically, I, I think it's fair to say that things are also... An absolute cluster F, especially with what's happening between the larger proxy conflict between the West and the East. And today, I think it was surmised perfectly the direction we're going in, as of course the UN chief came out today and said, quote, that humanity is one miscalculation away from nuclear annihilation. And seeing what's going on, I would have to agree with some of his warnings, as of course there's been a lot of different saber rattling. There's been major escalations when it comes to foreign policy, the intervention of the military industrial complex, the promotion of creating conflict rather than de escalating it. And today, we're getting more. More details about the U.S. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, which a lot of people question if it would happen. Today, we're finding out from official sources that she will be arriving in Taipei, the capital of Taiwan, tomorrow night. This allegedly according to Taiwanese broadcasters. All of this as Chinese state-affiliated media has been literally running clear-out threats against her, saying specifically that when Nancy Pelosi lands in Taipei, this will, quote, ignite the power keg as they are warning that they will not sit idly by if Pelosi visits Taiwan. Some government Chinese officials are also saying that Pelosi will perish if she decides to visit Taiwan. Extremely aggressive hyperbolic statements as the Chinese military has even gone as far as to post a video of their military exercises in response to Pelosi's visit. This says, of course, Taiwan just canceled their leave of their soldiers, and the United States is, of course, moving in their assets closer to Taiwan in case of a potential conflict here, which is an absolutely crazy situation, but a situation that we've been foretelling you about for a very long time. Strategically, the United States should definitely be working more with India. They're not. India's falling into the sphere of influence of, of Russia. We should be using more diplomacy. We should be, of course, not depending on China for almost everything that we depend on, but 
But of course, we also have politicians that have been corrupted, bought off and paid for by the Chinese government and, of course, the corporations that are tied into their son's businesses. And holy cow, I'm getting into a topic that I can't talk about here on this particular platform. Anyway, this whole thing's crazy and it's going to get crazier. Prepare. That's just according to my own personal perspective and opinion. If you think I'm wrong, let me know why down in the comment section below. I got one more video coming your way right after this one, which you can watch right now on LukeUnsensored.com. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys actively watching and sharing these videos. And this is why. I love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.